Last week, we finished up a four-week series on the subject of how the Bible can change your life. For the next four weeks, I'm going to start a series, starting today, which is this subject of how prayer can change your life. Okay, so we're going to focus on what it means to communicate with God and for God to speak with us. Now today, what I want to speak to you about from this series is this subject, is praying with confidence. Okay? Praying with confidence. It was early in ministry for me. I was a young pastor, and I had pioneered a church, which means started a church, planted a church in New Jersey. And we were there probably for about maybe five or six years. And I remember going through a time where I was having a crisis of confidence in my life. And I met with an older pastor who was a leader of our district. We called them district superintendents. And I met with him, and I kind of had in my spirit a little bit of self-pity. I know you guys probably never have that, but once in a while I go through that, like, why, why don't I have more success? Why don't people treat me better? Why don't I have this? Why don't I have that? Come on. Anybody go through those times? Amen. And I remember thinking to myself, well, maybe this pastor will help me. Give, maybe he'll give me a little few words. And so I started to complain a little bit. I started to whine a little bit. And I said something like this. I said, you know, there are some times when I don't even know if I should be in the ministry or not. Maybe I should be doing something else. Maybe God has not called me to do this. So I'm kind of hoping that this other pastor would say, oh, that's a, you know, you're okay, he's going to be fine. But his words were very wise. He looked at me straight in the eye, and he said, you know, Mark, you have to figure that out yourself. I said, like, oh, great. Don't you hate it when people are so right? <laughs> oh, he's exactly right. Because... Going through a confidence crisis, a lot of weird thoughts come into your mind. And you have to come to the place where you have assurance and you just know from God that you're doing what God wants you to do. Amen. And so he was right. And I had to go back and I had to pray and say, God, I know you've called me into the ministry and I know that you've called me to be a pastor. Help me never to complain or whine or to question your calling. Amen. Crisis and confidence. Now, I have with me a, a flashlight. This is a, a very nice flashlight. It was given to me by a person who sold flashlights to fire companies. So this is a really good it's heavy duty too, you know, if you ever have a problem, you know, and somebody comes into your house, it's like a hammer. It's very, very strong. So, uh, no, I don't own guns. Um, but I noticed the other day, when I picked this flashlight up, I noticed something that is a little bit of a problem. Can you see that? Can you all see that? Just barely. Just barely. Okay, if you say just barely, then that's correct, because it is just barely on. You see, at one time, this was shining very bright. I mean, very powerful. But simply with the passing of time, the passing of time, it grows dim. And what this flashlight needs, because the light is good, there's nothing wrong with the light, there's nothing wrong with the flashlight itself, I mean, it's not broken. What this needs is for the batteries to be recharged, right? Amen. And then it will be an amazing light. You would even see it in a well-lit room. 
I want to talk to you about praying with confidence because praying and confidence has to do a lot with this battery. Just as praying builds confidence, so this batteries recharged bring light. And I'm asking God to speak to your heart today because some of you are struggling with this whole thing of confidence. And I'm asking God to keep your confidence bright. Okay? To not let it just grow dim Amen. so that no one can ever see it. You know what it means when your confidence grows dim? It's like, well, yeah, I'm still, I'm still a Christian, but man, I just, nobody knows, and I never share Christ with anybody, and I kind of doubt if God hears me, and I'm just defeated, and you all know those kind of feelings, okay? So, God wants you and I to have a confidence that's bright. Now, there's a psalm, there's a chapter in the Bible that I see as a recharging of confidence. This Psalm 27 was written by David, and David was experiencing all kinds of struggles in life. I mean, he had a very difficult life. And Psalm 27, to me, is like David plugging in and praying and God pouring out confidence into his life. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to read with me Psalm 27, and I want you to read it responsively, which means that I'll read the first verse, and you read the second verse, and then we'll go on and, go, and we'll all read the last verse together. Okay. Uh, let's see. I have, a, I have an extra microphone here. That'd be fun to have somebody come up. Uh, let's see. Maria, would you want to come up and read verse 2, and then verse 4, and then verse 6, and you'll be the responsive reading person. If you as a congregation, you're going to follow Maria. Okay, don't follow me. All right, so we're going to start with verse number one of Psalm 27. And Maria's going to read, uh, I don't know if you might have not had the same version as this. You might want to see it all. NIV? It's NIV. Okay. But even NIV has a couple different versions. Oh. Okay. Um, all right. So, I'll read verse one, and you follow Maria on verse two, and then we'll go through. Okay, so let's pay attention. What's that? You want the mic? Okay, you got it. Okay. I knew you could do that. It's a challenge. All right. Verse number one. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord. Your Go ahead. It's yours. The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evil men advance against me to devour my flesh, when my enemies and my foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. The Lord will not me. My heart will not fear. The war will break out against me. Even if I will be confident. Notice the word confident? Yes. One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek Him in His temple. For in the day of trouble, He will keep me safe in His dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of the tabernacle and set me high on a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me, at his tabernacle will I sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call the Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, O God, my Savior. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my enemies. 
because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desire of my foes, for false witnesses rise up against me, breathing out violence. I am still confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. All together. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart. And wait for the Lord. Amen. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 God's word. Thank you so much, Maria. I think I messed you up on the verses too, but thank you for following and uh, doing well. All right. Now, I looked at this song and I prayed and I said, God, what's the message that you would have for your people this week? And then these questions started coming into my mind. And so what I'm going to do is present to you some questions about confidence. What it means praying with confidence. And so the first question that I bring to you is a simple question. What is confidence? Now, in the world that we live, People think confidence is being proud and being arrogant. So much of the time, a person that would say, yeah, I'm a confident individual. Well, so much, it's like they're just disguising a bad attitude. Amen. Because confidence in the Bible is not going around saying, I'm so great and I'm better than anybody else. That's not confidence. That's pride. And the Bible tells us that God hates pride. Amen. Now, He doesn't hate confidence, but He hates pride. Amen. So if we're going to be confident, it can't be the kind of confidence that's just plain arrogance. You know, the culture that we live in encourages us to have our mind on ourselves, to focus on ourselves. The, uh, I saw a lady with a t-shirt a few weeks ago, and the t-shirt said, I love me. It's like, oh, really? Is that the best you can do? I mean, is it wrong to love yourself? Well, the problem is, is that we love ourselves and oftentimes say, when we say, well, I love me, and you better too, or watch out. That seems to be the attitude. And I looked at this woman and I, I, I said to myself, man, I, I sure wouldn't want to be her husband Amen. if she's married. Because life is not all about me. Amen. Okay? So confidence isn't like, hey, I'm just such a great person and I go around all day long saying, I'm a wonderful human being. I'm amazing. No. That's not true biblical confidence. Self-esteem is not the answer. Now, am I against self-esteem? No. But too many people try to get to self-esteem just through self. Amen. The way to have a healthy self-esteem is to esteem God. Amen. Because when we esteem God, then we're able to understand ourselves in relationship to who God is. Amen. You see, confidence is a positive faith filled outlook on God, on yourself, and on others. Okay, can I repeat that? Amen. Confidence is having a positive, faith-filled attitude toward God and toward yourself and toward others. Now, there is a word in the Bible for confidence, and the word that we came um, to in Psalm 27 means boldness. It means being secure, placing your trust, relying, being secure in the right thing. Okay? So the Bible teaches us that those who are righteous, who, have, who are made right with God, are bold as a lion. Amen. So we can have a boldness. We can have a confidence that's not arrogant, that doesn't push people down but that enables us to, to stand up Amen. and to be assertive in the right way. Okay, that's the kind of confidence that I want. Now, why, here's another good question. Why do we need confidence? David was the one who wrote this psalm. You remember David the shepherd boy? 
then he wrote Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want, and so on. Well, David had many enemies. Do you know the greatest enemy that he had? It was a man called Goliath. Let me tell you something. There's a Goliath spirit in the world. And the Goliath spirit will come against you because you're a believer in Jesus. And this Goliath spirit will try to tell you you can't make a difference. It doesn't matter what you do. You're nobody. You're nothing. It doesn't matter. You might as well just live like everybody else. The Goliath spirit will try to intimidate you and try to get you to not follow Jesus and to get you depressed and discouraged. You see, when David had the courage to go out and face Goliath, Goliath tried to defeat David psychologically before he beat him physically. You know, this whole thing of psychological warfare. And so here Goliath is on the field and David comes toward him. David, all he has is a slingshot and some stones. And when Goliath, who is over nine feet tall, when he sees this young, rather small, young man coming at him, Goliath starts to curse David by his gods. And Goliath says to David, he says, What am I, a dog, that you come against me with sticks? Come here, I'm going to feed your flesh to the birds. Now, if David wasn't confident, and he listened to those words, and David looked up into the face of a, a nine-foot bully and said, wow, maybe he's right. You know, maybe I am going to be bird feed in a few minutes. You see, if he allowed himself to listen to the Goliath spirit, then his confidence would have drained down the sewer. And he would have run just and shaken just like everybody else. But he didn't. Because David could look at Goliath and say, you come against me with javelin and sword, but I come in the name of the Lord God Almighty. Amen. You see, David was not bigger than Goliath, but God was bigger than Goliath. And God had directed David onto the battlefield. So what I'm saying to you is that every one of us are going to be attacked in our confidence. Amen. It may be at work. Sometimes God uses uh, people to encourage us, but sometimes God uses the enemy to discourage us. They might say to you at work, oh, you don't belong here, you're no good, you can't do this. That's why David said this, okay? In Psalms 27 and verse number 2, he said, When evil men advance against me to devour my flesh, when my enemies and my foes attack me. So David is knowing that he needs confidence because there are enemies in this world. Now David did not go out trying to make enemies, but he had to handle them when they came at him. Okay? So we need confidence in this world because there are enemies. Amen. No, I'm not saying necessarily people. I'm not saying that the enemy spirit of Goliath that uses people Amen. to try to bring us down. And David also had, he said, there's great challenges in this world. There are many challenges that are going to come against our confidence. That's why he said in verse number five, for in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. Brothers and sisters, we're going to have days of trouble. Okay? You might be in one right now where it just seems like everything's going wrong. It seems like you pray and nothing happens. Don't lose your confidence. Okay? Don't 
believe the Goliath spirit. But keep going. Amen? Amen? Amen. You've got to keep going. Amen. Because God has a plan for you. Amen. He really does. Thank you, Lord. And he wants to bless you. Yes. But he, he can't bless you if you just give up your confidence. So, I know uh, even pastoring this church, sometimes the enemy will come at me with confidence questions. You know, like, why isn't the church bigger? Why doesn't the church have more money? Well, you know, those are God's issues. Amen. I just have to be faithful and obedient, just like you have to be faithful and obedient. Amen. And I believe that God is God, and He has plans for this church. Amen. And so, why should we listen to the enemy? Amen. Right? Amen. Exactly, exactly. He, he deserves that, that praise. Yes. So, God wants us to keep our confidence up. Amen. And He wants us to be looking at Him. Not just at circumstances. Amen. God's a good God. Amen. You know, I was praying to God a couple weeks ago. And I, I remember just praying this prayer. saying, Lord, okay, you know our need. You know our need of finances. You know our need of growing with people. And this thought came to me. Why don't you have God be the pastor and you be the assistant pastor? And I said, Oh, that's awesome, God. So I'll be happy to be the assistant pastor. Amen. So every time there's an issue that's bigger than me, I say, uh, Pastor, uh, you know what? You really need to handle this uh, because you're the assistant. I'm just the assistant. So if you want to call me assistant pastor, Mark, I don't mind it at all. I am. He's the, he's the, he's the true pastor. So I'm happy about that. All right. Here's another question. A good question. How do we receive confidence? Okay. How do we receive confidence? Do we just go in a corner somewhere and say, I'm confident, I'm confident, I'm confident. Say it a million times. No. We receive confidence through prayer. The more I pray the more confident I feel. Amen. The less I pray, the more this I feel. <laughs> Dim. Yeah. Almost ready to give out. And in our prayers, this is what we are to pray. We're to pray proclamation prayers. Proclamation prayers are praying and saying, this is what I believe. Now, when David prayed a proclamation prayer, his prayer was all about who God was. So he's proclaiming in prayer, Lord, you're my light. You're my salvation. You're my strength. You're my stronghold. He's proclaiming these things in prayer. Why? Because he wants to be a person of strong confidence in God. Now, he's not saying these things because God has forgotten who he is. God doesn't forget who he is. But we sometimes forget who he is. Amen. And so, in prayer, when we're praising God and we're thanking him for his strength, we are reminding ourselves of the greatness and the power and the glory of God and our confidence rises. Amen. You see, if we go through the day and we're just thinking about how bad life is and how our circumstances stink and how things are not coming together, and what happens is that our confidence just goes way, way down. Amen. But when we pray and we proclaim... God, you are great. You are sovereign in spite of what I'm going through. Yeah, and again, the confidence. That's why Daniel, you know, our Bible study on Daniel is so powerful because it's about the sovereignty of God even when life looks like it's falling apart. Amen. So we proclaim God and we persevere. You see, confidence comes as a result of persevering in the right direction. It's hard to have confidence if on Tuesday I'm saying, God, you're so great, 
And then on Wednesday, I'm saying, God, I hate you. It doesn't work. No. Confidence comes by being consistent. It's being, it's perseverance. That's why David prayed this. David said, one thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord once in a while. Is that what he said? No. no. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm reading it from a bad dream. <laughs> that I may dwell in the house of the Lord on Sundays. No. Oh, no, I'm sorry, I'm reading it wrong again. All, is that what it says? All, read it with me. All the days of my life. Okay, so God's plan for us is to dwell in his house. That doesn't mean coming to church every single day. It means we as the temple, you know, God dwells in us, is that we're connecting with God every single day. Amen. That we're walking with God every single day. Amen. Whether we feel like it or not, whether spiritually it's snowing or it's hailing or it's a beautiful sunshiny day and no humidity, whatever, whatever's going on, we're walking with God every single day. Amen. Okay? That's a confidence builder. Now, do we do that? Well, maybe, maybe not. And if not, if you want your confidence to grow, again, you've got to be consistent. Amen. And then there's this thing about purity. If you're going to be confident in God, you have to be serious about what He says. And God is a holy God, and so we have to be serious about this stuff called holiness. The Bible tells us that if we harbor sin in our hearts, that He won't hear us. Amen. That's in the Psalms. Now, it doesn't mean that we have to be perfect to be with God and to be you know, confident with God. But it does mean this, that if we are practicing sin, we are habitually practicing sin, and we know it. Maybe other people don't know it. But that, even if we hide it from other people, our confidence in God is shot. We have to make that right to regain confidence. Amen. Because the enemy of our soul will come at us with guilt and with shame and with words that say, you know what? You can't serve God. You shouldn't even go to church because this is going on in your life. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. The enemy will attack if you allow an area of impurity to stay in your life. There's a story that I heard a long time ago, and I'm not sure if it was true or just a, a story, but it, it, it says it powerfully. There was a, a, a couple of children, brother and sister, uh, nine and seven years old, and they were visiting their grandmother out in the country. It's called John and Susie, okay, John and Susie. And as they're visiting their grandmother, uh, their grandmother, you know, takes them around their little farm and she shows them. She has a couple of, of pet ducks that she really likes. And so one time Johnny and Susie are out there playing by the, you know, the, out the pond in the, the little farm. And Johnny's got a pretty good arm. You know, he's, he's been starting to play, um, you know, uh, Little League. And he has, so he takes a rock and he thinks he's going to miss. So he says, hey, Susie, watch this. And so he winds up like a pitcher and he throws the rock really hard at one of the ducks. And to his horror, he discovers that he hits the duck right in the head. And the duck falls over dead. It's like Johnny's like stunned. So he picks up the duck and runs to the woods and disposes of the duck and comes back and doesn't really know quite what to do. And uh, so he says to Susie, please don't tell Grandma. Susie so says, okay, I won't. So they're at supper time, and Grandma, after supper, says, Hey, Susie, it's your time to do the dishes. And Susie looks over at Johnny, and she says, You know what? Johnny wants to do the dishes tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so Johnny does the dishes. And the next day, there's some other chores to be done for Susie, and Susie says, You know what? Johnny is so nice, he's told me he wants to do all my chores today. Johnny goes, oh. 
So he goes, <laughs> so Johnny does all these chores day after day until finally at the end of the week he can't stand it anymore. He says he goes to the grandma and says, Grandma, I am so sorry, but I killed your duck. And grandma looks at him and says, Johnny, you know, I knew that you did because I was looking out the window and I saw that it happened. I was just wondering how long you would go letting Susie to control you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> You know, the enemy does that. Amen. Enemy, you know, if you try to take a step forward in God, the enemy's going to be right there saying, remember the duck. Amen. So do something about it. Right? Do something. Have a clear conscience. Amen. Whatever it takes, have a clear conscience. You know, even we as pastors, we have to be careful. Amen. I remember the first church that I was serving at as a youth pastor. Uh, I was also working in the Christian school that they had. And in the Christian school, we had a cafeteria and we had um, food that we as staff had a reduced price, but we, we, should, we had to pay for the food. But there was no one that was collecting it every day. and It was kind of put into a common fund. And so, you know, I did. I paid for the food and so on. But there were many days that I was so busy, or maybe I didn't have it on me, that I said to myself, you know what, I'll just take care of it later. I'll take care of it later. And I had no idea how many days I did that, but it was it was a lot. It was more than seven. It was more than two weeks. I don't know how many. But I remember when I left that church and uh, went on to, to study and then I went on to pastor somewhere else, I remember at times in my spirit saying, you know what? I took something from that church and never paid it back. Now, it wasn't like something like totally big and evil, but it was enough to bother my conscience. You ever go to bed at night and there's a mosquito in the room? Doesn't that bug you? I mean, it does mean it. I mean, I know I can go to sleep and I know the mosquito won't take that much blood, but it's just, oh, I'm gonna kill that thing. And so it's like in my spirit, I had like a, that mosquito that would be flying around me. And so what I did was this. I said, Lord, I prayed about it. I said, Lord, what would you want me to do about that? It's been over you know, 15 years since I've been at that church. And I felt on my spirit, write a check and just send it as a gift to the church. Amen. And so I did. I, I just figured out, you know what? It probably was about that amount. And I, I sent a check to the church. I didn't say on the, on the check, this is because I stole from you years ago. No. So, here's the check of blessings on you. And you know, it was awesome because that mosquito was swatted. Amen. That mosquito never bothered me again anymore. Because I took a step to make sure my conscience was clear. Okay? And so if you're going to have confidence in prayer, then if there's anything that we've done in the past that we can make right, let's do it. What's you know, good conscience worth, right? Isn't it valuable? Now, sometimes there's not always things we can go back to. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. You may have some exes in your life that you, you just don't want to go back to. You better not. Cause more problems than help. So, okay. wisdom. Wisdom. My last question, my last question is this. What are we to do with confidence? Okay? What are we to do with confidence? This is the scripture, by the way, that goes along with purifying prayer. That's verse 7. What are we to do with this confidence? Okay. With confidence, if you have it, don't trash it. Don't throw it away. That's what the Bible says in Hebrews 10.35. Would you read it with me? It's a powerful verse. So... Do not throw away your confidence. It will be rich to the glory. Okay. So the Bible saying don't throw it away means that it is a possibility to throw away. Amen. So don't trash it. Value it. You only throw away things that you don't value. Okay, But value confidence. Okay. And keep it. 
Keep your confidence. You know what happens when you have confidence? You can face the future. And you can look at it. Even though you don't know it, you can walk with it. You can walk with confidence into the future. Amen. People who don't have confidence oftentimes are always reaching back in the past. And they're like looking back. And they're backing into their future because they're afraid, you know, what might be there. They're always looking back. No, a confident person can look into the future and can go forward because they know even though it might be dark in the future, God is there. Amen. And He has gone before us. So keep your confidence. Keep it bright. I love this verse. One of my favorites in the whole Bible. I am still confident of this. Say it with me. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. Are you in the land of the living? Amen. Ask you that. Okay. Amen. Are you in the land of the living? Yes. Uh, is, are there any zombies in our presence? No. Uh, okay, nobody. Thank you. You're in the land of the living. And so, with confidence, we can say, I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. God has goodness in store for us. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be easy. I don't know what the economy is going to be. I don't know where our, where our country is going exactly. But I do know this, that we serve a good God. Amen. God loves us. And he has good, Psalmist says, he has good stored up for those who fear him. Amen. God is amazing. Amen. And lastly, Give confidence away to others. Amen. Now, I don't mind helping people. I love helping people. But sometimes you get into the presence of other people and they're so negative Amen. that you have all you can do to, to stand up because like you feel like you're being pulled down. Amen. So we want to, with confidence, to help them up, to be a blessing. But be careful that you don't make your best friends people that are always trying to pull you down. Amen. Thank you. Lord. I don't know who it was, but I, it stuck in my spirit. Someone said relationships are like elevators. You know, you're either they're going to be the pulling you up or they're pulling you down. So have good relationships. That's another series coming to a church near you. <laughs> Just got to put this prayer on me. But, um, <laughs> let me end with a little story. There's a lady that came to our church that I was pastoring in Massachusetts. And she came all the way from Mongolia. Okay? And she was not someone that was uh, loud or expressive. Uh, she kind of just you know, stayed in the shadows of things. You might say she was like a small light. All right, this is, a, this is a light. It's a very small one. And one day she really surprised me. Her name was Dagi. All right, it took a while to even figure out her name. It's like, what? D-A-G-I. Okay, got it. Dagi. So she came up to me one time. She said, Pastor, I came here to this country, and, you know, to learn the English. I have a real desire for other people to be able to learn English. And I found out about this English as a second language ministry. And I would like to begin uh, you know, this ministry. So as a pastor, oftentimes when people say, Pastor, I'd like to begin this ministry, they're saying this. They're saying, Pastor, I have a ministry here. Would you please do this? So I talked to Devi and I said, if you have a burden for this ministry, then you need to pray about it and you need to find someone else that could team up with you and then come to me with some ideas of how to start this ministry. So I thought to myself, I didn't have much confidence in her. You know, I just thought to myself, well, that's probably the end of that. You know, she's probably just going to say, well, no, thank you. Well, she comes back to me and she has one of our pastor's wives, okay, which is great. And they both come, at, come back at me and I said, Pastor, we want to do this ministry called English as a Second Language. I said, you know what? I think that's a great idea. You go ahead and plan it, and uh, we'll make some steps. We'll announce it in church. You have to get the workers together. You have to get the teachers together. 
And um, so then they left. And I thought, well, maybe that's the end of that. But absolutely not. They had so much confidence. They got talking to people in the church, and they got leadership together, and they got teachers together. And we put a little sign out front, say, free English classes. And so I'm just kind of wondering, you know, okay, maybe we'll have 10 or 15 people, you know. The very first session that they have, there, there's 105 people there. Wow. From all over the world. I mean, there were some Buddhist nuns that were in our session that we were teaching English to, and the way that we taught them English was to have them read the Bible. <laughs> they were reading the Bible, learning English. And you know, that ministry brought all kinds of people into the church. People that we baptized, people that we discipled. And that ministry today, that was many years ago, is going strong. And just because of one person who had some confidence. Amen. She was just a little light. Just a little light. Is that light uh, very dim? Oh, no. no, it's really dim, right? Isn't it? Oops, yeah. sorry about that. <laughs> it's just a small light, right? It's small. Yeah. yeah. She was small. She wasn't a leader in the church or anything, but she had confidence that God had said something to her. Can you see me? Yeah. That God had said something to her. And that God was going to fall through. Amen. You know, you can do great things. As... William Carey once said, attempt great things. Amen. Okay? Because God is a great God. Amen. Amen. Attempt great things. Expect great things. God wants to use your life. He does. Be confident of that. 